what's happening here is, you know, they've gone up against the corporatocracy, against the attempted corporatocracy. Yeah. And these men and women, and, and let me tell you, I think all of us in India as well, all of us are equally inspired by seeing this humbled and inspired and really, really hopeful, uh, you know, to see this people's uprising, the largest ever in the history of humanity, which is what happened on November 26th. The farmers unions and the workers unions, the leaders all called for a nationwide all India Bund. So Bund means a strike, a workers strike. And that is estimated at approximately 250 million people participated. That was, the, that, that was the start of the protests. And since then, they've been ongoing. Today, I think, is day 51 mm -hmm. of the protests. And there are now five boundary sites around the city-state of Delhi, the uh, capital of India. The approach is the major commercial highway approaches into Delhi where the big encampments are all set up. The two biggest are Singhu and Tikri, which are in the Haryana and Delhi border. And, uh, but they're, they're surrounding, they've laid siege to Delhi as it were in a peaceful protest, in a peaceful non-violent protest. The farmers in India are called Annadata. So Annadata means food provider, food giver. And it's, it's actually a very, uh, it's a sacred and hallowed position in the Indian culture. It's a very respected position for obvious reasons. They give the, you know, food. As I've heard said from the protests, protest sites. It's like, this is not our profession. This is not what we do for a living. This is our culture. It's mm -hmm. who we are. This is who we are. To be a farmer is not something that's necessarily, you know, from seen from the perspective of modernity as a profession. It is a way of life. Mm -hmm. It is a way of life. And these people have come prepared to give their life for it. It's, this is the depth of the belief. They've said they will be there six months, they'll be there a year, they'll be there two years, they'll wait till 2024 when this, when this government's term is finished. And they said they'll see him out of office, but they are not reneging on this. The, 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 the demand to the government is that it must repeal these three farm bills. So they've said that um, in, in Hindi it goes, hum, hum maangne nahi aaye hai, hum apna haq lene aaye hai. Which means, um, you know, we've not come here to ask or beg. We've come here to demand our rights. Mm -hmm. So the entire approach to what is happening is very different. It, it, it's not coming, asking, or against something. It's standing in your truth. Mm -hmm. Very clearly grounded and saying, this is right. That is not, and it needs to change. So far, the government and the union leaders, the Council of Elders, they've had eight rounds of talks. Mm -hmm. And this last talk, the council of the, the union leaders, in fact, went mon, you know, took a, a, the mon, a, 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 vow, a, a vow of silence. They just sat in that meeting and went silence. And when they, they gave a statement afterwards, they said, you know, basically we've been through seven rounds of meetings with them, explaining our stand our perspective that this is non-negotiable they must repeal the three laws first after which there can be talk about everything else after which they can be talk about dismantling the protest sites you know whatever else may have happened whatever else the negotiations are but the fundamental tenet is that the farm laws these three farm laws have to be repealed yeah 
And they said the negotiating committee that had been sent by the government came into the eighth meeting asking them, well, what is it? What is it that you want? What's going on? What are the points of this? And they were like, you know, they're, they, they're not serious. If after seven meetings, they're asking us, they're still asking us, what is it that they want? They're not serious. And we can see that, you know, this last round of meetings, they came out and they actually said, uh, you know, they, 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 they'd written on these pieces of paper, basically saying, uh, either we win or we die trying. That's the stance of the farmers at this point, is either we win or we die trying, which gives me great hope that yes, they will win because there's many, many of us supporting them spiritually in prayer in thought in, in, and thought and and no one should undervalue that, you know, uh, once a day taking a minute to just send a good intent and protection and prayer for these hundreds and thousands of people who've left their lives to come there and fight for our, on, on our behalf. The people who have come here, are, are, they began in Punjab. And, you know, th there, there's quite an iconic, kind of uh, imagery or symbolism or idea and character around the Sikhs from Punjab. The Sikhs are a community of people from Punjab. You, you'll know them by uh, primarily the turbans the men wear. Mm -hmm. And that's because they keep their hair long. One of the tenets of the faith is not to cut the hair. So the men and women both keep their hair long. And they're people of great faith. Many of the tenets of, of the Sikhs includes uh, something called langar, which is feeding people. Literally, it's that. So most of the farmers in these areas are from this faith, are Sikhs. And uh, you know, most of them, uh, of their harvest, will give 10% to the the temple, the Gurdwara, the Sikh temple is called the Gurdwara. And that is so there is always food, so that there's always food to give to everybody. So Langar feeding people is part of this tradition. It's part of the tenets of the faith. Um, and this is what they've been doing in these protest encampments as well. They've, they've been feeding people, they've set up, you know, these mobile kitchens and food making, uh, you know, machines that they brought that make roti to hand out. Um, people that have been living on the, you know, the, the, the boundaries of these highways well before the protests now say that their lives have actually improved since these encampments began. Because everybody's getting food, they've they they've set up mobile uh, schools for the children, their own as well as the children. Some of the some children from around the areas as well, and uh, yeah, they've literally improved life there and done in you know a month and some days what the government has not done for decades. Yeah, it it it, it seems in the moment that. As a country, we saw these elders, the Annadatas, the food providers, and the state violence upon them. I think that was when, as a nation, everybody understood what was happening and is in great solidarity with the cause of the farmers, the entire nation. Strength comes from prayer and faith and hope it's fueled this entire protest is fueled by faith mm. by faith yeah. what what else would you be able to go up against the state no longer just about the farmers in delhi and the protests against the farm bills this is this this is about our democracy yeah. It's about our republic. It's about the people taking the republic back from the corporatocracy. This is the front line.
where they meet what is trying to come and be and and be amongst us and they are there blocking it truth authenticity integrity the alignment of intent thought words and actions and that there are still people in the world that have this because so few do there is so little left that honors and values this can you get people to come out for more than a day long protest can you get people to come out for more than a weekend or like saturday morning to saturday afternoon for a day long would those people be willing to come and stay and not leave until you know every one of your lockdown tier level whatever that they're doing there i'm not very familiar with what what's happening in england but i know there're tiers and levels and ways that they've got people curfewed and locked down would you be on mass able to gather the people and say no we are not leaving till you relent till the government serves us as the servant of the people that the government is supposed to be what is it going to take when will you draw that line on the sand mm -hmm. how much invasion uh are you going to take how much will you allow this predatory wetico virus that's amongst us not the covid the wetico virus uh, which is a mind virus of greed avarice corruption uh delusion what will it take for us to stop this to draw the line in the sand and say enough the farmers have done it they've drawn the line in the sand and they stand by it and they're literally willing to die for it like i said the last meeting they came out saying either we win or we die it was in written in punjabi and held up after the meeting written in punjabi either we win or we die this this is the level of resolve 